To another episode of K-Pop RC. In this episode, we continue the Cletus McFarland neighbor build. Let her rip tater chip. Wait. Let me consult my notes. Damn, I'm pumped! If you're just joining us on this series, I am building Cletus McFarland's Crown Victoria named Neighbor. You got a name, Ed? Call it Neighbor. It's got a swap GT500 motor engine in it. It is a monster. Not only does it drift around the Freedom Factory track, but it also spews out incredible amounts of smoke out of the back of those tires. Hell oh yeah, brother! So join me as I build this legend of motorsport and uh, YouTube glory. <laughs> William Fisk says, do it for Dale. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Raymond Lowe, raise hell RC it for Dale. As Riley Williams says, loving the crown Vic. They suck to be in the back seat. Jason Barnett says, can't wait to see them bald eagles fly. RC Maniac says, kick some tires, light some fires. Hell yeah, brother. Yes, hell yeah, brother. Woo! Chris Riley says, pumped to see what you do for the engine bay this episode. Too good. We made a heck of a mess. All right, there's some fresh area over there. I didn't even realize. On the first episode, we found a Crown Victoria body STL file that I bought. Not super pleased with it, but it did print. I made it fit my wheelbase of my chassis, and I also recreated Cletus McFarlane's custom rear bumper. Also, I made the police light bar for the top, and I also made the bull bar of which you guys said in the comments it was a little too high. So let's quickly fix that. I mean, I'm gonna bend it. Let's bring it into SketchUp, awesome. Let's we'll just highlight this, drag it back, wicked, copy it, flip it, export it, throw it down on the build plate, print it. Boom, done, fixed. All right, first thing on the docket is uh, something that is gonna make the Cletus McFarland neighbor project the freaking coolest burnout RC car ever. A lot of you guys have mentioned it in the comments and uh, I know about this guy, I know his uh, projects and uh, I am a huge fan of his. Uh, that is Super Scale 2020. Super Scale 2020 is a badass modeler. Uh, not only does he make really, really cool 3D printed um, car models, uh, everything from like 110 scale, huge old school, like rat rod style cars to like, like super scale, uh, you know, 124 scale fans. The dude does some cool stuff and he has released a really, really awesome um, Arduino controlled, suspension, how would I explain it? All right, so if you want one of these, before I even explain to you what it does, if you want one of these units, you gotta go to his website. The link is in the description below. It is superscale20k20.com. Um, on that website, it will explain exactly what this unit does. It is a evolving project. The firmware is being updated all the time. This unit will give your RC car a one-to-one -one realistic suspension behavior. What that means is when this unit feels the car break or go into a slide, it will actually force the car to list and sway 
like it would in real life. Let's face it, these RC cars have no mass. They are very small and they weigh nothing. And the springs that are used and the shocks that are used do not react the same way that a real car would. So what this does is it puts a servo on all four corners of the suspension and it fakes the kind of sway and that kind of like listing um, that you get with a one-to-one -one car. Super, super cool. So he just released a new firmware specifically for crawlers that gives it this kind of like leaf spring kind of like bounce to it, which just makes the scale crawlers look real. And he also built this amazing rat rod that, uh, that uses this kit. And in the drift, it really leans to one side. It, in the slide, it kind of pitches and it rolls like a real car would. So if you want one of these, you gotta check him out. Go to his website, link is in the description below. Um, also check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he has posted videos of all of his projects. And, uh, and they are all just mental and amazing. So stay tuned to this guy's projects because this is, this is a true engineer here. I'm just the guy that's like falling through it, but this guy knows what the hell he's doing. And it'll actually be really cool to work with him on the neighbor project with the um, practical sound because um, there are a lot of plans to add uh, much more functionality to this unit. Um, one of the things, some of the things that he's talking about adding in here is like an ESC pass through for like realistic acceleration and braking rates. So, you know, he's, he wants to bridge this between your ESC basically and adjust sort of how it'll accelerate, which is super cool. Um, also switching between neutral and drive gears and allow for sort of idle sounds, which is another super cool. Vehicle roll induced by torque of the engine. That's gonna be really cool because um, it would be really cool if it was in neutral and you gave it the gas and the whole thing, you know, twisted with the torque of, you know, what would be a really torquey V8 motor or whatever motor. This is basically the coolest thing to happen to scale RC probably since brushless motors, since LiPo batteries. This is, this is gonna make things look so real that, uh, that you're gonna have trouble figuring out if that's a model or a real car. Give them, uh, give them a sub, check them out on Instagram and uh, tell them K-Pop RC sent you. And uh, go buy them, these are available. You can get this kit already. Um, and, and you can make your scale crawler bounce around like a real leaf spring, you know, or sprung car. Um, that or you can make your drift car lean into the drifts, which, which look, I mean, they don't do that. Uh, at that scale so check check him out super super excited to be working with him and uh, and this is just another thing to mount I am waiting right now for the shorty servos I have a bunch of servos that I ordered but they're not shorty and they're heavy so I'm kind of just waiting for the perfect um, the perfect uh, servos for this kit and it's going in but this is something to look forward to uh, I have it in my hand uh, I'm planning on using it. I have to make sure it fits in the chassis. I've got to do a bunch of planning for it. So um, I wish I could show you more with this being put in the chassis, but that's just gonna have to wait for another episode. But, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, I'm plastering this video with scale, uh, super scales videos. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of taste of what's to come with neighbor. Huge, super, super badass.
All right, let's talk about the chassis. The chassis uh, was bouncing around. Uh, I was thinking about maybe doing a solid rear wheel axle and, you know, using like an axial transmission and axle and figuring out, you know, some kind of four link suspension thing and, and just designing all this stuff. And to be honest, I, I don't want to spend that much time on it. And I, I kind of want something that I know is going to drift and, uh, and something that is cheap and doesn't take a ton of my time to make it work. Bam. So I ended up picking up a uh, D Secura D4, the all wheel drive version of the chassis. I didn't build this on camera because um, this is kind of a notoriously crappy kit to put together. Uh, so I don't particularly recommend it. Plus not a lot of people are four wheel uh, drive drifting anymore in the RC space. Uh, everybody's going a rear wheel drive, which is harder to do, but just like, it's like much more fun, much more sort of realistic experience of weight transfer and throttle control. Um, so what this is, this is a four wheel drive belt driven chassis. And the reason I picked this is because it has a front spool. And what's cool about the front spool is that it has one-way bearings. And these one-way bearings will allow the, the drive to uh, propel the wheels forward and the wheels can still roll when you're off throttle. So that's what the spool does. But right now I cut, I cut the belt and uh, the only thing in the front is the spool. So if I hold the spool, if I hold the spool, the wheels will not turn forward. They lock going forward, but they spin going backwards. If we are burning out and we want control over the vehicle and the car starts to turn this way, I need one of the wheels to go backwards in order to be kind of realistic. Um, not only that, I am going to be putting a servo here and the servo is not going to lock the spool. It's not going to lock it. Uh, I'm going to be able to adjust the the friction on the belt, I'll be able to let off the front brake as I'm burning out, which is key, I think, to making a realistic burnout. That is the chassis, and this is what I'm gonna use for neighbor. And it's ready to go, and I'm just waiting for a motor and ESC from Hobby Wing. Um, just so you know, if you go to hobbywingdirect.com and you use the discount code KPOPROCKS, you can get like a pretty substantial discount on their ESCs and motors. And they have motors for everything. They've got motors and ESCs for boats, for crawlers, they've got um, quad motors and ESCs. So if you guys want, you know, I can't remember if it's 15 or 20% off, but uh, it's a substantial discount. Use my discount code KPOPROCKS. Um, yeah. So I'm just waiting for that motor and ESC to come in uh, so I can start testing. Man, my ears are getting red. I have this hot light here. It's hot in here. All right, next, next is the engine. I don't know, just a heads up, I don't really know a lot about Ford uh, big block engines. Like I just don't know much about it. I've never been like a domestic guy. All I know is what I've screen grabbed. So I've been screen grabbing all of the times that Cletus has been working on Neighbor and I've been looking and trying to figure out exactly what you can see. Holy smokes, it's coming together. It's so exciting. It's not a stock Mustang, you know? It's like, it's a freaking Crown Victoria with a GT500 big block in it. Look at this, guys. A <laughs> freaking Crown Vic. It's just different, and I want it to look similar. I want it to look the part. So um, I just did a ton of screen grabs, and I used those screen grabs to build a fairly, fairly accurate 3D rendering. First, I, um, I went to vmpperformance.com and I found a few images of their supercharger to use as reference. And I used that reference and I built a fairly scale version of the supercharger.
and I also kind of looked at motors that were taken out of a car and just looked at the valve covers and kind of roughed in the valve covers and split them apart with kind of a fake block and I put the supercharger on top. Then I had to kind of figure out the scale because um, that supercharger that I originally made, it was just way too big for the motor and it just stuck out way too much. So I kind of had to scale everything down and make it just look as, as realistic as I could. Once I had that together, I started with the pulleys. Um, there are a whole ton of pulleys on the front of this engine. I'm not doing all of the pulleys because you can't really see them because of all the cabling. So I really, really took my time to make sure that the supercharger pulley and the tension pulley, which is an updated uh, tension pulley from VMP because they're using the small supercharger pulley. down the motor design and print it out uh, I'm not gonna get the most detailed print so I'm only gonna be doing what I can I'm not gonna be putting the SVT logo on the side of the valve covers like that's just overkill and I, I don't think you can really see it that well anyway in the neighbor project you all you see are just like tons of coolant lines tons of fuel lines like there's a fuel line going over the supercharger there's like um, a bunch of coolant lines coming out. I, I, I think just like, like power, there's like a loom, there's like an overflow tank. There's just like a whole bunch of like hair that cover the motor. So I have to keep that in mind that um, a lot of the motor is kind of hidden under there. And we do want to switch to our smaller pulley later today and we got a smaller belt. So we should be able to switch to the pulley and not have a belt slip. And they need to fix the tension on that belt. So. They have this larger pulley beside the supercharger pulley that really holds tension on there. And uh, and I just wanted that to look really right. So I, I just made sure that those things looked really good. I also printed this motor a few times. I printed it a total of three times. The first time it was way too small. Second time it was getting better, but third time was perfect. fits so perfectly in the engine bay. And now I have to kind of get it to stick out of the hood a little bit more. So I have to kind of print some offset spacers that attach to the front spool uh, housing on the chassis to get the motor to lift up just a little bit. Once that's together, it'll be like rigidly mounted and, uh, and that's what I'm looking for. And I think I pulled it off. Let me know in the comments below if you think what you think uh don't tell me it sucks because uh, it was a lot of hours that was a lot of hours it's basically the last two weeks of my spare time has been modeling this motor gosh man dude it looks so sick looks so good it looks better than i was expecting even like i'm so pumped also uh i haven't made but i'm planning on making the rad support the rate top of the radiator the battery the coolant overflow tank uh the windshield wiper uh, plastic housing that's got to be made as well and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do the wheel wells I don't think I'm gonna do wheel wells I got to do a firewall firewalls probably got to be important but all of that stuff is gonna take time and uh, it took me a long time to make that motor so this episode is pretty much about that motor and uh, and nothing else in the engine bay but I assure you that engine bay is gonna look really good Wicked. It's the engine. It's that time to give away a set of sweet ass Recaro seats for your sweet scale ride. Or put them on your desk, hang them off the rear view mirror, whatever. If you'd like to be considered for a set, leave me a comment below, sub to the channel, and maybe a pair will be yours. This week's winner is Jay Humph. Jay Humph, your seats are in the mail. What was cool about Jay Humph is uh, he uh, is definitely following me on Facebook. He does follow me on Instagram. He sent me a bunch of wicked links on what he thinks might work to 
get the sound that I'm looking for, the practical sound of that V8, the practical sound of that supercharger. And uh, I just appreciate that because he uh, went out of his way to sort of send me something that he thinks that probably work. And he's not the only one. So I mean, I'm only giving away a set of seats every episode. So um, he's the first one that I'm gonna send those seats to, but uh, just so you know that the other dudes that have sent me ideas and uh, links to projects, um, you are definitely up there on the list of seat recipients. So if you want to be considered for the next Recaro seat giveaway, yo, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the project. Let me know if you have any cool ideas on how I'm gonna get this thing to smoke, how I'm gonna get this thing to sound like a V8, how I'm gonna get this thing to sound like it has a VMP supercharger wine on it. You gotta let me know. Let me know what you think. I gotta hive mind this thing. You guys have better ideas than I do and uh, I appreciate you guys letting me know when you have good ideas because they're all good, you know? Wicked. That's it for this episode of K-Pop RC. On the next episode, um, I will have a functioning break. I will also have um, maybe the first iteration of the sound uh, of the motor. And um, I gotta start sanding this goddamn body. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I hate body work and, uh, and I'm putting it off as long as I can before I really have to get on it. And I think now is the time. Now is the time to get on the body work and get it kind of smoothed out. Hopefully I'll have um, the hobby wing motor so I can uh, test out the functionality of that front brake system for the burnout. And uh, I also have a very good idea on how I'm gonna make that engine smoke, how I'm gonna make those tires smoke. I do worry that I am gonna melt the shit out of the back of this Secura chassis, but thank God it's a cheap chassis. And uh, you know, if I get one video of this thing burning out and melting, uh, I feel like that'll be success. And that's kind of on par with what Cletus did. He would melt the hell out of the bumper and uh, most of the time that car would just not work after a serious, serious burning. So um, uh, if, I, if, it, if I destroy it, I destroy it, whatever. How's the body damage looking? Oh! My bumper. Stay tuned, I'm gonna go through the comments on episode two. Uh, you know, if you want, I don't know if you wanna do it, it's probably gonna be like 10 minutes of me just talking. So uh, stay tuned if you want. If you wanna hear your name, if you wanna hear your, your comment get shouted out, uh, leave me a comment below and uh, yeah, K-pop out. I swear to God, my ears gonna like melt off. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh. All right, the coolest. This is the coolest comment in the last video, all right? I'm gonna read it to you guys, and uh, I almost lost my shit when I read it. Uh, I almost pooped my pants. That's how crazy it is. It says, uh, it's from Troy, no longer from Profab. It says, uh, hell yeah, brother. The light bar blew me away, so cool. The bumper, however, is what intrigued me, seeing as I'm the guy that fabricated the actual bumper on the back of neighbor. Laugh out loud. What? All right, Cleet was quite specific about it mimicking the stock bumper and it took a few swings to get it right, but you replicated pretty darn accurately. I subscribed and I'm looking forward to seeing more RC stuff from the past and in the future. It's a nice break from the political crap that's just spewing uncontrollably. Laugh out loud, rock on, man. Yes, wicked, man. Uh, yeah, uh, glad to have you on board. That's so cool. Uh, I can't even imagine how much work it would be to make that thing out of steel. And with a two bender, you know, I was just clicking buttons on my computer. Like, I was just clicking buttons. This guy's like with a mendrel bender, you know, bending pipes. I'm sure he's he had to take a few swings at it to get it, like, the profile's just right. Here I am, like, you know, with the keyboard clicking the mouse. Mad respect, Troy. Mad respect. That's legend. The man, the myth, the legend. The dude that made the bumper in real life is commenting on my video. That's just like, that kind of praise, you can't, yeah. That's some, cra that's some praise, man, that makes me happy. <laughs> so cool. Oh, James Louder says, uh, Ricaros. 
V12 bro says you definitely make me want to get a 3D printer for my RC stuff. Laugh out loud. Yeah, man, get, just get one, whatever. I mean, if you're into RC, you're probably gonna be into 3D printing and now's the time. Um, just do it, it's uh, it's fun. You don't even have to be a modeler. You just download the, you just download the files and print them. And, uh, and there's just tons of them out there and people are just making this stuff. So why not, right? Why not? Gavin Bria says, uh, thank you for posting great content. I'm hoping to get a 3D printer soon so I can do my own 10 scale trucks. But thank you for referring the Ender 3. I'll definitely be getting it and love the build. Yeah, man, that's the one to get. Um, that's the one to get. Yeah, for sure. If you're, I mean, if your budget's under 300 bucks. Getting inspiration for me and my son, got him a 3D printer for Christmas. Lucky son. And I'm um, looking forward to inspiring his creativity themed build might be the ticket awesome content thanks bro uh that's bryce dupriest dupriest yeah man uh that you're an awesome dad for getting uh for getting your son that i mean yeah inspire his creativity get him uh get that phone out of his hand and get him 3d modeling that's for sure luke rutledge says uh the bull bar comes up too high to be scale and looks weird shorten it down a little bit agreed already done Liebarger says the build's amazing please don't take this wrong but i'm emergency vehicle upfitter and your push bumper is slightly too tall the top crossbar stops even with the top of the grill invert and doesn't go above the grill thank you for that dan it's hard to see in the photos but you're totally right it is definitely too high and the information you gave me about it being um no higher than the grill invert uh, is uh, super super helpful because that gives me a reference to just move that bar down a little bit awesome. Yazan Yazan 2025 says that bumper uh, Released all the bald eagles to be honest good work. Thanks, buddy uh, Adam Henderson styron bumper was not a total waste of time You always learn from everything you do unless you're a total moron, but yes 3d printed one is so badass brother Thanks, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm always trying to learn. Uh, I think somebody was mentioning that I should be using solid rod styrene, which is actually harder to find for me to buy. Uh, and I also had a whole bunch of just like, not rod, but like pipe, styrene pipe. So I was like, trying to use what I had, but it's the wrong material for sure. But still just like how tedious it is to just sort of get the measurements. Like, I mean, it was so easy for me just to take the bumper into my slicer and just cut three profile slivers out of it and use those profile slivers as a way to make my tube in 3d i just made that bumper as perfect as i could and uh and it looks exactly like the real one and uh, i couldn't be happier with it how it turned out sir rage a lot says hell yeah brother do it for cleat yeah i'm doing it for cleat i'm not sending him just before I get more comments about this, I'm not sending him this project. Uh, I just don't, I feel like he's going to like mention it once and put it in a shoebox and forget about it. And I just don't want to do that. I might send him a GT uh, 500 engine print. Um, that would be cool. Uh, maybe he can put it on his desk. Jay's RC World says, great videos. Your videos help inspire me with my scale drift truck build. My scale drift truck is a solid rear wheel axle C channel frame. It's a drift truck. I definitely enjoy watching the videos. That's super cool, man. Um, I definitely want to be, I definitely want to make a pickup truck drift build at some point. Uh, and that's cool that it's a C channel and it has a solid rear, rear wheel axle. That's, that's quite ambitious. I'm in your guy says uh, this guy makes me feel 12 in 2007. Hey man, whatever, uh, you know, whatever makes you feel young, you know, and alive. That's what, that's what it's about. I mean, what do you want to feel like 40 and broken? <laughs> David Grow says, uh, I can't believe how far this hobby has progressed since the late nineties. Agreed. Uh, my first RC kit was a Traxxas kit back when Traxxas made kits. I think they're back at making kits now, but for a long time they were just making ready to runs and it's kind of plasticky garbage. Uh, I don't, don't mean to offend anybody who's into Traxxas, but I, I kind of feel like they've, they've gone more toy route than, uh, than like how they used to be in the 90s, which was like kind of race inspired short course truck stuff, you know, trucks. And yeah, I had a, um, 
Traxxas Blue Hawk, Traxxas Blue Eagle, or something. Um, and that thing was the best, man. I had so much fun with that thing. I, had, uh, I don't even think it was nickel metal hydrides. It was like the worst batteries. They took like eight hours to charge. I'd get them for 20 minutes outside my house, and then I'd have to charge it for another eight hours. So yeah, man, that ho the hobby has progressed like crazy. Even like um, telemetry and radios, like it's crazy. You've got that one uh, dude from Montreal who's got his like um, he's got his like crawler with like FPV, and he's got uh, he's got like a two kilometer distance. He can go two kilometers <laughs> with this thing, and he you know his camera view has his voltage and and it and it shows you his his diff locks and stuff, man. Hopefully I'm showing the video right now because that and, and that dude's channel because uh, Man that guy's got a cool setup. Yeah, man. It's come a long way since the 90s and uh, it's a good time to be in the hobby That's for sure World of radio control says Ricaros Oh space onyx space onyx another dude that's sending me wicked links and uh, Appreciate it, man there's a video of G-Scale Hudson steam locomotive with a custom smoke unit, and it's uh, better than the real thing. It's a big unit, but I'm sure you could make it smaller and just as effective. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, I am not going the route of a vape. I am not going the route of a smoke machine. So that's just a heads up, guys. I'm not going that route. I have something in the works Stay tuned for the next video to check it out because it's going to be insane. Yes. Sinformant. I don't know. For smoke, I say buy a couple of cheap fate pens, disassemble, disassemble them, and design housings for them for a fan to blow smoke up. Man, I, they, I keep getting this idea. The people keep sending me this idea, but I don't think they realize that, like, 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 find me a motor that can blow up a balloon. Like, find me a little fan this big that can blow a balloon up, right? Because, like, we're comparing, like, the volume and the power of lungs to a little tiny fan. And, like, I don't think people realize how, how much force you have when you suck in your air. You know, like it's I, I don't know what it is in bars. I don't know what it is in PSI, but it's definitely a lot more. Even if it's just one PSI, that's much more than any little tiny fan can do. So like, yeah, there's a coil. Yeah, there's a bunch of oil hitting the coil and that is creating smoke. But unless you're pulling air through that coil, you're not going to create as much smoke uh, unless you're taking mad, mad vape hits, you know? And, uh, and uh, you know, I've already kind of tried this out already, so I'm not doing it. Mike J. For tire smoke, maybe drill lots of holes in the tires and figure out a way to fill them and refill them with baby powder. Serious? I don't think he's serious. Revis. Revis says, I'd use an electric motor for wine, uh, no power to it, just spin it with a different motor connected to either the motor or just another motor. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe I'll try that out. Straight cut metal spur, gear and pinion should wine pretty good. Yeah, on a real car, uh, this is uh, Ezra Evans. It's a good thought, but uh, just a heads up, um, the car already has straight gears and they don't wine that much because they're not made of metal and uh, and they're also not big enough to really hear hear them spin. Skilas Skilas says uh, I would run a brushless outrunner. They make a cool whiny noise. See, this is really intriguing. What an outrunner is is the the outer the outer casing of the motor is what spins. And uh, and it's true. They're basically what uh, race quads use. They definitely have a whine. It's a very high pitch whine. That could be a, that that could be an option. Yeah, agreed. David Arnold, same thing. Use a Holmes Hobby Outrunner motor. Yeah. PF says, uh, "Wow, lots of great comments and support, dear brother. Don't look, neglect the girlfriend. It's important to find balance, and good girlfriends are hard to find these days." Uh, totally agree. Um, check out me. Check me out on Instagram and uh, and see what she bought me for my birthday. <laughs> Definitely a keeper. Um, idea time for the SC wine. Supercharged wine. If you have ever blown compressed air into a dry or fresh cleaned bearing minus the shields, it winds like a bit, bit, bit. 
which, yes, uh, I have, and I agree. The problem is finding compressed air. Uh, and compressing that air and holding that compressed air is all going to create a ton of weight. Number two, the engine rumble can come from a K-pop RC designed and 3D printed cylindrical shroud of sorts, which will have some series of flaps of appropriate length and thickness that will ride on teeth of a 32 pinion, 32 pitch or a larger pinion gear attached to a motor turning at a varying RPM. This idea has been in my head for five years. Do eat, yes. Okay, this guy is the closest um, in the comments that I've seen to my plans. I am gonna be doing exactly that. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stack a couple of pinions, uh, maybe different pitches, not sure. But the thing is, I don't know if I'm going to use a straight pinion. I might actually um, offset the hole on the pinion so that it has, it's almost like a cam. So um, it will, it will kind of wobble. And I think that's gonna give us the sound we're looking for, at least for the V8 sound. I don't know about the supercharger sound. The supercharger sound might actually be a much higher pitched pinion gear, maybe not uh, oval, um, and some kind of reed, probably like a carbon fiber um, two-stroke motorcycle reed, because those things always flap. Um, I think that would have the longevity that I'm looking for. All right, wiki man. Thanks guys for hanging out. I just realized that I had uh, just talked to you guys for another solid 20 minutes. I appreciate all the comments. Leave me uh, more comments down below if you have ideas for what I'm gonna do. Uh, you just gotta remember I'm, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it sound like neighbor. I'm trying to make it smoke like neighbor. And uh, I'm trying to make it look like neighbor. Those are the three, three things that have to happen. So yeah, leave me a comment below if you have any ideas or any, or any insight because uh, it's much appreciated. Thanks a lot, dudes. Have a good one. Ciao.